Every vertebrate on the planet needs iodine to survive, and it's no secret that iodine performs some very important functions in the body. But are there certain situations where supplementing with iodine can actually do more harm than good? You don't want to miss out on this, and in 10 seconds, I'm going to tell you all about it. Hi, I'm Sage. It's great to be here with you. I'm your source of cutting edge wellness information that can help you find answers and become happier and healthier in your own life. Please support us by hitting the subscribe button and ringing the notification bell. It only takes a second and it does so much to support our tiny family business. As you may know, I'm deeply passionate about helping you not just with educational information, but also by offering some amazing products that I develop for our company. You can find a link down in the description to the world's healthiest gourmet chocolates, delicious elixir blends, and the purest, most potent adaptogens. Now, iodine is an incredible mineral. It's used by so many different cells in different ways throughout the body, primarily by the thyroid, but also by just about every other cell you can possibly imagine. Average iodine levels over the last 30 years have declined by about 50%. And there was actually a study of 5,000 people done, and they found that 96% of them were at least a little bit iodine deficient. Now, soils where you live are going to have a huge impact on your iodine consumption. Because if you're living in the middle of a country, uh, let's say you're living in um, somewhere like Nebraska, there's not much iodine in that soil. On the other hand, if you're living in a coastal area, because of the ocean spray, you actually get more iodine in those soils. And of course, when you're going to the richest sources of iodine, we're going to be looking at foods coming from the ocean, whether this is uh, seafood in, in, in the terms of uh, fish, shellfish, etc., or whether we're looking at sea vegetables, things like kelp, nori, bladderwrack, dulse, wakame. You may never have heard of any of those except for kelp, but there's a whole world of different plant foods. Uh, well, algae in some sense for some of them, but all these different edible non-animal foods, let's say, growing in the ocean that are spectacularly nutritious and very high in iodine. So kelp is one that people are, to a certain degree, familiar with, uh, but dulse is actually, in my opinion, the tastiest of the sea vegetables, and it's the highest source of iodine, so that's really a win-win. Now, iodine, what is it? It's a trace mineral, and it's an essential component of your thyroid hormones. The thyroid concentrates iodine and uses it to make thyroid hormones. When you hear about T3 and T4, what do you think the three and the four are? Those are referring to the number of iodine atoms attached to that thyroid hormone, either three uh, atoms of it or four atoms of it. And this is going to control your metabolism. It's going to help with uh, maintaining healthy blood sugar levels and balancing energy levels. It supports heavy metal detoxification and also supports your immune system and your healthy skin. So this is having roles in many different things going on in the body. Now, when it comes to hormones, it's also important to note that iodine helps to convert estradiol, which is kind of a bad estrogen in many senses, uh, into estriol, which is a good estrogen. And iodine, it's not like some other things like vitamin D, where vitamin D, you can build up reserves in your body. So ancestrally, if we got a lot of sun exposure in, in the summer months, but then didn't get sun exposure in the winter, our vitamin D stores could help to carry us through. Now, with this, it's not the same. Iodine is not really stored by the body, very small amounts and not really enough. So it's something that you need consistently coming in from dietary sources. Now you may get small amounts here and there from, from regular foods that you don't think too much about, but you might want to think about incorporating some stronger source of it, like some of the seafood, sea vegetables, kelp, etc. Uh, you know, you can also get it, of course, though, in, in dairy and cranberries and things like this, but it's not really on the same level. Now it's all sounding pretty good, right? You're thinking, geez, I should be supplementing with iodine. This could make my health so much better. Maybe, uh, possibly, in the right amounts, perhaps, but whether you're thinking about taking an iodine supplement or whether you're thinking about getting more iodine from, say, taking lots of kelp or, or other sea vegetables, you want to make sure that it's not having a negative effect, right? Because that would be the worst if you're going through such lengths to do something positive for your health and it actually backfires. So 
There is some research indicating that prolonged use of high doses of iodine can actually make certain thyroid disorders worse, uh, including hyperthyroidism, uh, if you have an enlarged thyroid as a goiter, or if you have thyroid tumors. And so with people also with autoimmune thyroid disease, which we see unfortunately more and more these days, uh, it can be harmful there as well. So this is something you wanna be very careful about if you have a pre-existing thyroid issue. And so you definitely would want to continue monitoring what you're doing very carefully and not go to huge mega doses. Now you, you, you probably want to have more than that, you know, federal recommendation of 150 micrograms. Uh, you, but I would make sure you don't exceed something in the range of two to three milligrams. That would be going over the top. Uh, you'd probably get to the point of diminishing marginal returns where, you know, you're not going to see a whole lot more benefit at three milligrams than you are at one milligram for, for most people and uh, you're raising the risk of other things possibly taking a turn for the worse, which we definitely don't want. So if you have tried iodine before and experienced some beneficial or perhaps not beneficial results from it, leave a comment below. I'm always curious to know what your experience has been. And before you go, check out one of our recent videos over here, or you can check out this video over here, which is one that YouTube thinks that you might enjoy. Have a beautiful day, guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you